Over the millennia, with the moon's prominent and constant presence in our night sky, men ultimately began to speculate on its origin. How did it form? How did the moon come to be? In 455 BCE, the Greek scholar Anaxagoras theorized that the moon was simply a rock that was flung off by the earth. Most of his contemporaries, on the other hand, were convinced that the moon was a god, or maybe a huge ball of fire. So Anaxagoras' notion did not get much traction. Quiet speculation no doubt continued, but no hard information about the moon came until 1609, when Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei pointed one of the first telescopes at the moon and recognized that he was looking at a landscape, the terrain of another world. When you look at the moon through a telescope, it looks completely different from the way it looks to the naked eye. Instead of looking flat the way it does to the naked eye, it really looks round and you can see the shadows, you can see all these craters that the naked eye does not see, and it just immediately looks like a world. It jumps out at you into three dimensions. Galileo made detailed drawings of the small planet's surface and established once and for all that the moon is a solid world, not a god or a fireball. But the groundbreaking astronomer never publicly speculated on the moon's origin, primarily because his interests soon moved to other planets. Not until 1873 did the first science-based theory regarding the origin of the moon publicly emerge. It sprang from the mind of a talented French astronomer named Edward Roche. Roche advocated what's called the co-accretion theory, which says that basically Earth and the Moon grew up at the same time out of the same materials. In Roche's day, many scientists began to believe that the planets might have formed from hot condensing clouds of gas. It gradually contracted and cooled, and as it contracted, it would separate out rings of gas. So you'd have a ring of gas here, a ring here, and so forth. And these rings of gas would then eventually coalesce and form the planets. Roche saw the Earth and the Moon as a solar system in miniature. His idea was that the Earth starts out as a ball of gas, and then cools and contracts, and sheds a ring of gas that then itself coalesces and forms the moon. But there are problems with this theory. For one, our moon has a much lower iron content than the Earth. If the two bodies formed from the same materials, their basic composition should be the same, but they are not. This and other inconsistencies soon led fellow astronomers to quest for new ideas to explain the existence of the moon. In the last third of the 19th century, advanced theories about the origin of the moon started to emerge. In 1873, French scientist Edward Roche proposed that the moon simply formed alongside the Earth out of essentially the same nebular cloud of particles and gases. But this idea had a fundamental weakness. The moon has a much lower iron content than the Earth it's much less dense. The big thing to remember about the moon and its composition is that it doesn't have any iron core like the Earth does. So you look at the Earth and there's a very large central area, something like half the inside of the Earth, is iron, nickel iron. And that's metal that drained down to the center of the Earth when the Earth was hot when it formed at the beginning. The moon is more like just plain rock. Scientists initially deduced the mass of the moon through observation and mathematical calculations. 
if the moon had formed from the same stuff that made the Earth, the iron content should be similar. It was a hole in the theory Edward Roche couldn't explain. But another idea soon followed on the heels of the co-accretion hypothesis. In 1878, George Darwin announced his fission theory of lunar origin. This idea received some attention in part because Darwin had a celebrated father. Charles Darwin, author of Origin of Species. In time though, George Darwin stepped out of his father's shadow and became known as England's leading expert on tides. And through extensive analysis of the tide-moon relationship, George Darwin came to the realization that the moon is gradually moving farther and farther away from the Earth. It wasn't proved until 95 years later when astronauts landed on the moon, they put little mirrors on the moon. And you can shine a laser at the moon and the laser will bounce off the mirror, come back, and you can actually measure the exact distance between the Earth and the moon. And the rate at which the distance is increasing is 3.8 centimeters per year. 3.8 centimeters is about an inch and a half. If you made a movie, extreme time lapse, you would see the moon moving away from Earth gradually. That's what we see nowadays. Darwin began to consider what would happen if you reversed the process, if you ran the movie backwards. As we move backwards in time and the moon moves closer, both the moon's orbit and the rotation of the Earth get faster and faster. And so, well, what happens is that eventually the moon must coalesce with the Earth. It must, it must hit the Earth. The logical conclusion for Darwin was that a portion of the molten, rapidly spinning Earth must have separated from the main mass and spun off to become our moon. He immediately began work on mathematical calculations to reverse the trajectory of the moon all the way back to the Earth. Frustratingly, he reaches a point where it gets almost to Earth, and then he couldn't work it out any farther. The mathematics doesn't let you go any farther. What you get to is a point where the moon is whipping around the Earth at a rate of five res revolutions a day, or six revolutions a day. So it's just zooming around the Earth, okay? And it's, it's about uh, 5,000 miles away from the Earth. Still, the mathematics did not allow Darwin to bring the two cosmic bodies into contact. The fission theory was debated for decades, but scientists eventually concluded that the relative movements of the Earth and Moon could not have resulted from it. The Earth would have been spinning too fast to account for its present rotation rate. <laughs> 